This is Mrs. Appia with Lesson 19, Understanding Variability When Estimating a Population Proportion. Student Outcomes for this lesson. Students understand the term sampling variability in the context of estimating a population proportion. Students know that increasing the sample size decreases sampling variability. In a previous lesson, you investigated sampling variability in the sample mean for numerical data. In this lesson, you will investigate sampling variability in the sample proportion for categorical data. Distinguishing between the sample mean for numerical data and the sample proportion for categorical data is important. This lesson begins with investigating these differences. It is important that you see the similarity between working with a proportion and what you did in the previous lessons when working with a mean. That is, as the sample size increases, the sampling variability of the sample proportions decreases. The dot plots provide a visual representation of sampling variability. Dot plots are also used to show the connection between sampling variability and sample size. The data used to calculate a proportion, such as the proportion of gym members that are female, is different from the data used to determine a mean such as the mean time people spend in the gym, or the mean number of words in a children's literature book. Other examples of proportions are the proportion of people at a particular school who run a marathon, or the proportion of Great Lake Perch that are five centimeters or less. Understanding what a proportion is and how the type of data used to calculate a proportion is different from the type of data you use to calculate, calculate a mean is important for the next couple of lessons. For each statistical question below, let's answer the questions A, what data would you collect to answer the question, and B, what would you do with the data collected? And this will help you understand the lesson in general. Question one, how many hours of sleep do seventh graders get on a night in which there is no school the next day? What data would we collect? The data would be on the number of hours students sleep. What would we do with that data? This would be numerical data, and the mean of the numbers would be used to answer the statistical question. Question two, what proportion of students in our school participate in a band or orchestra? We would get a sample of students to ask and indicate whether or not they participate in band or orchestra. This data would not be numerical. The proportion of the students participating in band or orchestra for the sample would be used to answer this statistical question. It would not be possible to calculate a mean based on this data. Question three, what is the typical weight of a backpack for students at our school? Now, weight is a numerical piece of data, so we would want the weight of the backpacks. Since it's a numerical data, you could calculate a mean. The data is numerical and the mean of the weights would be used to answer the statistical question. Question four, what is the likelihood that voters in a certain city will vote for a building in a new high school? That is not numerical data, that is a yes or a no. A sample of voters could be obtained. Each voter in the sample would be asked whether or not they would vote for a building in the new high school. This data is not numerical. The proportion of voters who indicated they would vote yes for the sample would be used to answer this question. Pause the video and copy the essential question. What is the population proportion as opposed to a population sample? In the previous lesson, you selected several random samples from a population. You recorded values of numerical variable. Then you calculated the mean for each sample saw that there was variability in the sample means, and created a distribution of sample means to better see the sampling variability. You then considered larger samples, and saw the variability in the distribution decreased when the sample size increases. In this lesson, you will use a similar process to investigate variability in sample proportions. Example 1, Sample Proportion. Your teacher will give you your group a bag that contains colored cubes, some of which are red. With your classmates, you are going to build a distribution of sample proportions. Each person in your group should randomly select a sample of 10 cubes from the bag. 
record the data from your in for your sample in the tab table below. So we've got cube one is green, cube two is orange, cube three is red, red, blue, orange, red, green, blue, and blue. What is the proportion of red cubes in your sample of 10? So the proportion is the number of red compared to the number of draws. So we count how many red there are. And we've got one, two, three. So we have three red out of 10 draws. And then you can calculate what that is. Three divided by 10 is 0.3. This value that we just calculated, this is called the sample proportion. We'll have to fix that, sample proportion. The sample proportion is found by writing the number of successes, in this case, the number of red, over the total number of observations, in this case, was 10 draws. And then you divide, and you can round to the nearest tenth if necessary. Write your sample proportion on a post-it note and place it on your number line that your teacher has drawn on the board. Place your note above the value on the number line that corresponds to your sample proportion. So we've gone ahead and done that activity and this is what our table looks like. These are all of the post-it notes. Pause the video and copy that onto your paper. The graph of all of the students' sample proportion is called a sampling distribution of the sampling proportions. Describe the shape of the distribution. The shape of the distribution, so here's what we're looking at, and we want to know what the shape is. Is it symmetrical? Is it skewed to the left or right? What is the variability? So here, the shape of the distribution, it is nearly symmetrical and it is clustered around. So if you'll notice that a lot of the data is in this area and centering around this column. So we would say that the data is clustered around 0 0.4. Describe the variability in the sample proportions. Now the variability is from what number is the lowest and the highest, where does the data fall? So in this case, the variability, the spread of the data is from 0 0.1 at the lowest to 0 0.7 at the highest. And much of the data clusters around between, so generally it is clustered in that area, between 0.3 and 0.5. What do you think? Uh, what do you think is the population proportion? The estimate is found by adding the numbers together. So in our table, we have all of those dots: 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. The estimate is found by adding all of those data points together, and then divide by the number of data recorded, which in this case is 2.9, or rather 29. So our sum is 11.5 and there are 29 sets of data because there are 29 students who recorded their mean and or rather their proportion and that division gives us 0.39655 which rounds to approximately 0 0.4. That means that proportionately four tenths of the numbers were red, rather four tenths of the papers were red. How confident are you of your estimate of four tenths? Because there is a lot of variability from sample to sample, okay, a lot of variability, what you're looking at is the range of numbers, and that's a pretty big range of numbers. Because there is a lot of variability from sample to sample, which goes from 0.1 to 0 0.7, I am not very confident in the estimate.
Remember, the bigger the variance, the less confidence you could have in the estimate. Example two, what do you think would happen to the sampling distribution if everyone in the class took a random sample of 30 cubes from the bag? To help answer this question, you will repeat the random sampling you did in exercise one, except now you will draw a random sample of 30 cubes instead of 10. Take a random sample of 30 cubes from the bag. Carefully record the outcome for each drawer. door. So we've gone ahead and do that, and here are the results. Blue, green, red, yellow, blue, red, red, green. Blue, red, green, red, red, green, yellow. Our next column, blue, blue, yellow, red, blue, red, green, red, red, blue, red, yellow, green, green, yellow. What is the proportion of red cubes in your sample of 30? Pause the video and find the proportion of red cubes. So you'll want to highlight all of the reds and count them. The proportion is 11 red out of 30. 11 divided by 30 is 0.367. Write your sample proportion on a post-it note and place the note on the number line that your teacher has drawn on the board. Place your note above the value on the number line that corresponds to your sample proportion. So the above data is one of the samples from class. The data plot that we're looking at next is all, every student's proportion. So go ahead and pause the video, copy that onto your paper. Describe the shape of the distribution. This is mound shaped and it is centered around 0.4. Exercises one through five. Describe the variability in the sample proportions. So I've just drawn or copied the dot plot here so that we can look at it. What I notice is that the spread of the data is from 0.26, which is right here, to 0.54. So when they ask you to describe the variability, remember you're looking at the spread from the lowest to the highest. Also, if the data is clustered, so most of the data clusters between 0.34 and 0.5, which would be about here. That's where most of the data is. Based on the distribution, answer the following. What do you think is the population proportion? Remember, the above dots added together divided by the number of dots. So here you would add 0.26 plus 0.26 plus 0.3 plus 0.3 plus 0.33 plus 0.33 plus 0.33 plus 0.33, etc. So we've gone ahead and done that and we get 12.14. Then the number of dots is 30. Divide and our proportion is 0.40466 approximately. And then we round that to the nearest tenth and it is also 0 0.4. So the population proportion is estimated at 0 0.4. How confident are you in your estimate? When the sample size is 30, there is less variability. So the variability is smaller here from 0.26 to 0.54. And remember, the smaller the variability, the more confident you can be in your proportion. If you were taking a random sample of 30 cubes and determined the proportion was red, do you think your sample proportion will be within 0.05 of the population proportion? Explain. So the population proportion, remember, was 0.4. 
And this question is saying, if you take, if you find it for this set of data, do you expect it to be within 0.05 of each? In other words, will it fall in this range either way? Well, about half of the dots are between 0.35 and 0.45 right here. So those are about half of the dots. There are several samples that had sample proportions that were farther away from the center than 0.05. So it is likely that my sample proportion would be further than 0.05 from the population proportion of 0.4. About half of the dots are close to it, but the other half are farther away. Question three, compare the sampling distribution based on samples of size 10 to the sampling distributions based on sample size 30. Well, both of them are mound shaped. Both are centered around 0.4. Okay, so this is the dot plot from sample size 10, and this is the dot plot from sample size 30. Notice that the data is more clustered when you have a bigger sampling, and the data has a bigger variability when you have a smaller sample. The variability is more in the small sample size of 10. The variability is less in the sample size of 30. As the sample size increased from 10 to 30, describe what happened to the sampling variability of the sample proportions. The sampling variability decreased as the sample size increased. Question five. What do you think would happen to the sampling variability of the sample proportions if the sample size for each sample was 50 instead of 30? Here, the variability with a small sample went from 0.1 to 0.7. The sample got a little bigger to a size 30 and your variability decreased. The next question is, if you had a sample of 50, would your variability be wider or smaller? The variability, which is the spread of the data of the sample proportions would decrease as the size of the sample increases. In this lesson, you have learned the sampling distribution of the sample proportion is a graph of the sample proportions for many different samples. The mean of the sample proportions will be approximately equal to the value of the population proportion. As the sample size increases, the sampling variability decreases.